Christmas. Yeah, it's that time of year, isn't it? We are going to be getting into this Advent season. We're going to be sharing some devotionals with you from verses of Scripture that, that correspond to some reading that you can do on your own to uh, get yourself in the proper frame of mind, and heart, spirit, uh, and come into this season um, you know, enjoying it, truly enjoying it as it should be enjoyed. Not getting overwhelmed with all the commercial aspects, but understanding some of the the, the spiritual truth that is uh, at the heart of what Christmas is. And so today, I'm going to share a verse of scripture with you out of Isaiah, the seventh chapter, and it's a very famous quote, um, and it's a simple one, and yet, boy, it says a mouthful. So let's read it. This is Isaiah chapter seven and verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Of course, this brings up a lot of subjects. Uh, the, you know, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Some people call it the Immaculate Conception, right? It, it was a miraculous birth. The Holy Spirit, God's Spirit coming upon Mary and um, uh, basically, you know, conceiving that child within her. It, uh, it says a, 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 a ch um, what does it say there? A virgin shall conceive. Conceive is just a way of saying, you know, you're with child, you're pregnant. So, and, and Mary's pregnancy was of God himself through his spirit within her body. And the, literally, the, the literal conception took place in her body. So that's one part of it. And, and, and bear a son. This son is the prophesied one, the Messiah, uh, the, the one, the Christ, the one to pay for the penalty of this terrible uh, sin curse that has been placed upon every generation of people from Adam on down, passed on, passed on. And yet, how is this going to happen? How can any human being, because they inherit that curse of the sin? Well, it can be because God bypassed the human chain and he fathered himself. God fathered himself, his only begotten son. And so, you shall call his name Emmanuel. Wow. God with us. Emmanuel. I want you to think about what happened here. God became a man. God became a man. God's plan from even before Adam sinned, because God's God, he knew it, right? Was going to be that he himself was going to have to be the sacrifice to save his greatest creation. You know, we're, we are God's greatest creation, human beings. We are God's greatest creation. We are, we are created in the image of God. And, you know, the ramifications of that, I don't think any of us can fully um, just appreciate. But we are his greatest creation. And God knew in order to save his creation so that he could then redeem them back, bring them back, buy them back into a personal relationship that would never be broken again. Never be broken again. In order to do that. He was going to have to sacrifice himself. And for, in order for God to sacrifice himself, he was going to have to become a man. What does this mean? You know, the, 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 uh, the spiritual implications of this uh, go, go so deep in an understanding of, or, or an attempt to understand the, the consequences of when God became a man. Well, you know, there's, there's places in Scripture we can go to to kind of maybe get a, begin to get a handle on this. But one that I always think about is in Philippians, and in, this, in the second chapter of Philippians. 
And the, here the Apostle Paul is explaining to the Philippian people what happened, and he, and he explains it from the perspective of the mind of Jesus Christ. He started this, this section of Scripture by saying, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So he's telling the Philippians, I want you to think like Jesus thought. Well, okay. How did Jesus think? Well, here it is. This is what he said. He said, who, Jesus, being in the form of God, existing as God, being having all the attributes of God. He was 100% God through and through. Being in the form of God. Now, the old King James has some language here that's kind of hard to understand. It says, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Wow, what does that mean? Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He was saying this. He was, in every sense, the uh, God in, in every way. And yet, he, in his mind, his thinking, knew and decided it's not worth hanging on to that and then seeing God's greatest creation, human beings, be lost forever. So it was worth it to not hang on to his, to his godness, so to speak, to, to all the being, being all the attributes of God. He didn't hang on to that. He didn't grab it. He let go of it. And when he let go of it, what happened? Well, number one, he didn't cease to be God. But boy, he ceased to be in the form of God. He ceased to have all the attributes of God. So that's what he says next. He made himself, verse 7, this is Philippians chapter 2, I just read 6, now I'm reading 7, verse 7. But made himself, his own volition, his own choice, he made himself of no reputation. What does that mean? He wasn't a famous guy? No. It literally means he emptied himself. He emptied himself and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So he gave up the attributes of being God and he emptied himself and he, as God still, became a human being. He became a man. He didn't stop there. After he became a man, verse 8 says, And being found in fashion as man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So Jesus, Emmanuel, the hope of the world, is God becoming a man and living a humble life as a man, knowing all along where he was headed, which was the cross, to die as a man to pay for your sin and my sin and everybody else's. Remember John the Baptist, what John the Baptist said? I just had this Sunday, last past Sunday, Sunday school lesson. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And that's what Emmanuel did for us. He came as a lamb, and he died as a sacrificial lamb, and his blood forever covers our sins. So when God looks at us, he sees his son, and he does not judge us. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, the scriptures tell us. Christmas, hope, Emmanuel, God became a man. And then he paid our penalty. And we can have hope in the ever after, and we have hope now. Think about it. God bless you this Christmas season.